Do this for my father, who I've only seen from time to time in my dreams. I do this for you. I do this for my mother, who's finally clean and no longer a fan. I do this for you. With the campaign in Call of Duty Ghosts, it isn't that great. The reason is because with the console transition, they had to make it look good. Well, it looks gorgeous. This campaign is beautiful. It is the most beautiful at that time. Where it came, it was the first game on next-gen consoles for Call of Duty, for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. The game looks good, but the story itself that they gave us back in 2013 wasn't that good of a story. It didn't, it wasn't coherent per se. We were supposed to be the silent gorilla unit only to open up with a gigantic explosion and us flying around in space. The game didn't look, the game setting was great. Post-apocalyptic world where US has fallen, it's invaded by other country. World, well, not even almost World War Three is almost Red Dawn type. It was, it's a very interesting story and a very interesting concept. But it wasn't very presented well. It didn't play right. The game's mechanics weren't that good. And you're gonna see a lot of that in the multiplayer segment. Call of Duty Ghosts isn't a terrible game. The story isn't even that bad. But it's a slog to get through to just play it. It's a side mode at this point. It's not that fun of a story because there's no story to be had. I mean, for the first couple missions, like, heck yeah, we're defending it, and it's just more explosions and more Call of Duty. It's Modern Warfare 3 all over again. Hell, it's MW2 and Modern Warfare 3 combined. That's not good. These things don't work the way they need to. A story has to be coherent. This game threw everything at once. I feel like if this game would have been Modern Warfare 4, and they would have introduced characters from Modern Warfare as these main characters, I think it would have worked so much better. You could still have it play the same, but it would make a lot more sense. Where he's pissed, and they start invading the US on multiple fronts using our weapons against us. That would have been a really cool idea. This game setting is good. Like, it takes place a lot of it in California at the beginning, then it goes around the globe for crying out loud, and it doesn't make much sense on why it does that. Call of Duty Ghosts campaign isn't the best campaign I've ever played. More warm from Black Ops 2 get that. But it's certainly not terrible. Because this game, this game's story, and the game entirely focuses heavily on you being a ghost, and that's also in the name, obviously. But it's not appearing that way. Because you're supposed to be a silent, you're supposed to be a haunting force. But yet, you never do anything stealthily besides like the first m two missions. Other than that, not a lot of it's stealth, and a lot of it's just explosive special forces, Modern Warfare 3 style, and, and that's one of the things that this game did wrong. And I feel like that's where this game's downfall is. It doesn't know what it wants to be. It has an identity crisis, and a lot of games have this nowadays. Battlefield has had this for the past couple years. What I mean by this is that they have not been as decent, like they've been very weird, the campaigns have been better, but the multiplayers have been lacking recently. But that's a video for another day. Call of Duty Ghosts was, came out after Modern Warfare 3, okay? Which, at this point, we've had, we had like nine Call of Duties in a row. Franchise fatigue had definitely set in at this point. I didn't even play COD Ghosts that often, and I don't regret it. I think I was playing Battlefield more at that time. Even then, I was playing games like GTA and stuff because it was a lot of easy. It was really fun to play. This game's competition was Battlefield 4, which looked beautiful. Both games look gorgeous, but they're not that good gorgeous. Games still look better than this, and it doesn't hold up. You, I mean, it looks decent, it doesn't look terrible, like God Rays you can see well, but the game itself doesn't look the greatest, it doesn't hold up. I look back on this game and I'm like, what the heck are these colors? 
But then I go and look at Black Ops 2 and it's vibrant, colorful, and it looks good. And that's how you know. One other thing is that Call of Duty hasn't had a good campaign in a while until Modern Warfare. And this game was the worst of all of them. I mean the worst. It is worse than Black Ops 3. That's saying something. Then again, at least you can at least kind of follow along with what they're doing, but you really can't at the same time. This game's story is weird. It takes place with the United States having a treaty with the Federation of South America and stuff. It's, it's a bunch of that stuff. It's not messy. But, with it, they had it where you are defending the U.S., but it seems more like you're attacking the U.S. But it just feels like a normal mission. Like, it just feels like another game. It feels like another, like, another generic shooter story. And that was the issue with it. They said that this was going to be a great game. Dogs, guard dogs. Cool, your partner's a dog. Which is kind of good. I mean, this was like the first game to really use motion capture to a really big extent. Because they did that for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and PC. Now, this game was in a console generation, so they kind of had to rush everything to make it work on both consoles. And on PC. And if things feel rushed and unfinished, that is why. Call of Duty Ghost's campaign is oddly familiar and fun, but it's just dumb fun, and I am not the biggest fan of it unless I just want to go kill a bunch of random things. But if I want to go kill a bunch of random things, I'm going to go play probably like a Modern Warfare's campaign or even ba Battlefield story. Because it's just so easy. But this, because the reason is this game just feels so weird. The game's like, it plays weirdly. Your character doesn't seem to move right. The hit detection isn't very good. The entire game has a bunch of invisible walls you will run into constantly. But that's mostly in the campaign. But this is also the best part about this entire game. The story is the best part about the game. Now, since I've been talking about negatives, let's talk about some positives about the story. Positives. Looks gorgeous. More positives. Characters are at look great. The third one. It feels next-gen because they didn't just have it where you teleport places. You, It's all connected. A lot of the beginning areas are all connected to the next mission and that, that's kind of good because some days they don't have those types of things like some missions lead into another mission like later on in the campaign you have a helicopter mission where you're going to capture the main bad guy and then after that you take your he's hostage and you're interrogating him in a plane and then you're in a jungle and you're just defending everything and then at the end of the game you're in you're on the ground in a tank and then you're in space using the um, Odin control, then next thing you know, you're on, you go back five minutes and then you're in a train sequence and, and then you still interact with what you did. That's one of the things about this game that is good. It feels next gen, but it doesn't look the next gen part. Like it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look super duper next gen. And I think that's one of the issues Call of Duty has had in the past couple years, is that it's not all the same. And that's one of the things that I took issue with, is that there's so many invisible barriers. You get stuck behind characters all the time. But this game isn't as bad as other games because you actually can walk around. It's not just a cutscene. Like right here in this, you're seeing uh, me playing. I'm walking around. It's not just a cutscene. And it's kind of the thing about this game that's unique, is it's not all cutscenes. And that's just one of the things that, a lot of the things I like about it. It's really weird to, to point out a bunch of positives when all there really is are negatives. Like, the location in California, San Francisco, it looks good. 
the whole game has a lot of detail in small areas. And it's really good. And I think that that's where this campaign fell. It fell because the negatives outweigh the positives. It may look good, but a game can look good, but if it doesn't play right, feel right, sound right, or even just look really good, it's not that good. It's not a fun time. Now, the multiplayer of Call of Duty Ghosts was interesting because you had squad points, which were new. You had your own squad member you could select from, which had a bunch of classes. Squad points, those were new. They were like COD points, but they were used to buy new weapons. Like this gun that's purchased here. They were used to purchase weapons and attachments and perks and killstreaks. This was different at the time, and I commend them for trying to change things up, but it was really good. There are a bunch of interesting camos that you could buy, like Festive or even the Ducky camo. But a lot of the normal camos weren't that good. Even gold was very mustardy. Something new they added were operations, which were just twists on the challenges of from old and modern warfare 3 and modern warfare 2. One of the newer things was the customization for your soldier. You could change your announcer voice to Snoop Dogg, a drill instructor, or even more. You could change your guard dog from a dog or a wolf. You could even change your background from a, if you've recently prestige in Black Ops 2, or if you've even recently played Black Ops 2 or prestige in Modern Warfare 3, or even just recently played Modern Warfare 3. You got those as your background, and that was always interesting. You also had these standard backgrounds, which went all the way down to from purchasing squad members, to getting clan war stuff, and you know, getting the game. You had to purchase all 10 squad members to be able to do that, which was your prestige. And then you had the bonus of DLC ones, which you had to buy to get stuff from, including that. Patches were also new, which some of these seem to have made their way into Modern Warfare as an idea for some emblems, which were kind of cool, but not very good because they're not customization. You can't customize them. Uniforms were new for a deeper customization. You could select these as different characters. You could select different headgear, from night vision goggles to just regular helmets to even no helmet. You could change your helmet. You could change your gender. You could be a ghillie suit, an astronaut, a soap from Modern Warfare, a cave, or even Rourke from the campaign macro, or hell, even Captain Price. Then you just go down the list. These were all new additions to Modern Call of Duty Ghosts that were interesting. The multiplayer of Call of Duty Ghosts was the worst part of the game, besides what we'll talk about in a second. Okay, it, this mode failed on so many fronts. It was interesting because it had a bunch of challenges you can do in game that always reset, which was very good. They had interactable maps, which was new for COD, except for like BO1 had some stuff like that. You could destroy certain areas on the maps to make cover, which is in Battlefield, which you can tell that's why they did it. But it wasn't that good. They added a new mounting mechanic, which has been in every COD since. But Battlefield has had it for so many years, so people kept playing that and didn't like, how, why wasn't it just a basic feature? Issues with it is it looks good, the multiplayer. The issue is characters blend in too much. I'm not hating on Ghost, okay? I, I, I somewhat enjoy this game. But the issues that I have with it is that none of it is very interesting. They had a SATCOM, which was a reskinned UAV. Reskinned UAV. But it was worse than a UAV because it was a box on the ground. It was a box. And even then, it's not even a full UAV. You had to use like five or four or five, four or five to get a full actual UAV to get the standard version of it. You had to combine them to get a good one. You had to get a lot of good things to use it. They added a bunch of interesting weaponry to this game because a lot of it was new. Because all of the weapons in this game are new and not in any other Call of Duty besides the Vector, the Bison, and that's it, and the M14. That's legitimately it. That is new in this game. Besides the M9A1, which, and again, it's not really close enough to be called a new gun. Because it's the same gun at this point. The game had a bunch of interesting things. You can tell that this game is similar to Modern Warfare 2019. I can tell they had inspiration from it. What I mean by this is the character customization is very 
interesting but very lackluster, as I mentioned earlier. Call of Duty Ghost has a bunch of small issues within its multiplayer. Its multiplayer is laggy and buggy. What I mean by buggy is there are constant frame drops. And I mean constant frame drops. That's not good for a game. A lot of games have that. But if you have a bunch of frame drops, it ruins the experience. Because you think you're lagging, but it's just the game itself not registering anything. The game had point streaks. We would never see these return, not even in Modern Warfare. This was the last game to have those. First introduced in Modern Warfare 3, which I would be fine if they made a return. I still think score streaks are the best, but I understand the point of kill streaks and point streaks. That's one of the biggest issues. This game had a bunch of weird weapons. It had a bunch of random things that made zero sense to be in the game. But hey, this game was the last Call of Duty before supply drops. It was the last boots on the ground game before Call of Duty World War II. I'm not counting the remaster in that, by the way. It was the final game to have being viable camos. Before Advanced Warfare, which even then, I mean, it kind of had them, but not to the extent that this game had, because you could still get a bunch of stuff out of supply drops. But even then, the game didn't look that good to be really well. The camos are weird at most. You couldn't put camos on your sidearms. And the maximum camo was mud mustardy. It was gold and mustardy. It wasn't that good. Festive is like my favorite camo in this game, mostly because it's free. You're seeing it on my honey badger here, but it's just vibrant. It's bright. It, it's kind of cool. That's multiple issues with this campaign, with this game. One interesting thing is that field upgrades are here. Field upgrades would never make a return in any Call of Duty game since, where you can get a care package just by teabagging a guy or getting a revenge kill or killing someone from behind. You could get a chem strike, which was this game's new, but it's more like the Moab and V2 rocket from World War II and Modern Warfare 3, respectively. The game is very interesting with this because you can get a chem strike legitly, or you can get it out of a field upgrade, baby. And that's one of the things that this game did, and I think that's one of the weirdest things that this game did. Even then, I think the multiplayer doesn't hold up today because there's no reason to play it. It doesn't take that long to find a match if you're on PlayStation 4, but it's not that worth it. If you were to play this to unlock certain characters, go for it. But you're not going to have that much fun. Because, in my mind, I'd much rather play Modern Warfare Remastered because there's a lot more players playing it, and it's more recent. And if you upload that, people are more interested. But that's just me. Personally. But you decide what you want to do with your experience. This game had a bunch of new killstreaks. A weapon box, Night Owl, a Vulture Drone, the reskinned UAV. The um, Juggernaut did make its return as the Maniac. They added a bunch of random new streaks, which were interesting. They did not add a bunch of stuff. A lot of people were thinking this was going to be the new Modern Warfare 2, but it's not, because it's not that good. It's not as good as Modern Warfare 2. The maps were too big. As you see here, the God Race I was talking about earlier, they look decent at best. They're not that good. They're not Ark Survival Evolved or even Battlefield level, but they're not terrible. But even then, that's just the way it feels and looks. The game's maps are too big for their own good. I like big maps. I really do. But for a 6v6 game, big maps don't work. Even in Modern Warfare, even in Black Ops 4, they barely work. That's one of the things that I think people get wrong is that they think that Modern Warfare is Ghost 2 because of maps. Well, no. People were complaining about big maps, but the whole game is based off of a semi-real conflict, which could happen at any moment, pretty much, and that's what it's based off of. But, at that same time, a lot of it is a fictional thing. The maps are big because it's not just three lanes, and I think that's one of the things that people don't understand is that if a game's three lanes, the maps feel the same. 
And that's some stuff that they iterated. Black Ops 4, all the maps feel the same. I honestly, when I was playing the game, I got mixed up between, I think it's Seaside and Contraband, like, my names mixed up because they're not interesting maps. They both are on a side of by a beach. They both are bright, vibrant, which I do commend that game for. But this game is a bunch of grays and a few greens here and there in jungle settings. But other than that, it's not super duper interesting. The game itself for the multiplayer had a bunch of weird weapons and hit detection. People complained that they died too fast and certain attachments changed stuff too much. I.e. muzzle break. Vector and Tar. Best weapons to use, because that's what pros use, that's what a lot of people use. Everyone in this game seems to use thermals anymore, and it's not that fun. Like, why sit in the corner with an M27 IAR with a thermal? There's there's no point. And I think that's something that games get wrong nowadays, is that they think that we are stupid. We don't know any better. But we do. But that's just my experience playing this multiplayer. I want to know what you guys think. Did Call of Duty Ghost multiplayer live up to its expectations for you? For me, it personally didn't. I stuck with Black Ops 2 until Advanced Warfare, and then, you know, I've played every con since then. Until Infinite, which I still played, and MWR I still played, but I played a lot of Destiny, and then from there, World War II launched, I played a lot of Destiny 2, and then when BO4 launched, I was playing con since then. More. I want to know what you guys think down below. Now the mode that people many consider the worst attempt on zombies ever. Extinction. Aliens. One map at launch that was too difficult solo. That was very stupid because it was one dead sprint, one linear ass path. So let's talk about it. All right, so Call of Duty Ghosts side mode, or third mode per se, was Extinction, okay? Extinction was an interesting mode. It was an interesting take on zombies, where you could search little piles and find attachments and money. Random things like that. But, it was absolutely pointless, because its story was interesting, but everything else was very dumb. All of it was dumb. The alien idea, kind of cool, ain't gonna lie, because it took place within the universe of Call of Duty Ghosts. It took place as if the Odin shot and they intercept when it crashed, they intercepted some alien stuff, and it's an interesting storyline. If you haven't figured it out, I would go look it up, because it's really cool, kind of. And it kind of leads into Exo Zombies, as it's just one big movie, not Exo Zombies, Infinite Warfare Zombies, as it's like one big movie per se. And that's kind of where the game fell for me. It's not interesting. I mean, it's the, the aliens. Yay. I mean, cool, I guess. I like surviving in a corner. And that's what I was used to at the time when Black Ops 2 was still around and Ghost came out. People didn't want to change what they were used to. They didn't want to have to go f do random ass things to get weaponry, I mean. You had to go buy weapons for 1500 but where's the box? What, skill points? What? A lot of these ideas are kind of cool. The little wheel at the bottom right where you can select ammo boxes in IMS, team explosives, or even a turret kind of thing. Those were cool ideas. But they just weren't executed well within this mode. These random challenges where it's like, get 75% well, you shoot one, you don't miss any shots, and it says you missed, but yet yeah, you didn't miss made no sense so you really the only way to get it is to shoot one of them and then knife the rest pretty much that's how you have to do it that's how a lot of people did it but you need to shoot because you don't want to have the knife and risk dying so fast that's one of the things that this game did wrong it's not zombies it's trying too hard to be zombies with money but the interesting thing is it had loadouts never before seen it in side mode we hadn't even seen that in survival for crying out loud from Infinity War. We hadn't even seen it by Treyarch yet. But Infinity War jumped up to the plate and gave us extinction. And all honestly, it's not bad. It's not super duper bad, but it tries too hard to be zombie. With the money thing, and the wheel, and perks per se. But the skills this time. The issue with this is that there's a drill you have to carry through the whole thing. Through every map to get rid of a hive. 
A drill? A hot- What? We can't just burn the thing to the flamethrower and call it a day? I mean, at the end of the day, a nuke goes off anyway, so I mean, as long as it's gonna matter. And yeah, that's the ending. A nuke goes off. And your team dies, because then you actually switch to meaningful characters in a storyline. Because this, this mission doesn't even matter. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it starts, it's an introductory thing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter, because it has nothing to do with the game. The game tried too hard to be a spooky type of idea, with the aliens coming out of nowhere and their glowing orange and stuff, and it just didn't work out super duper. And I think that's one of the issues that this mode had. It didn't feel right. Like, look at this. I'm just sitting in a corner shooting zombies with a pistol. And yes, I'm calling them zombies at this point because that's what they're supposed to be. What they should have been. You do you do have levels in this mode, so you can unlock backgrounds, which, like we talked about, the emblems, per se. And you can unlock teeth. A new thing in the game that was added after launch. And Chaos Mode wasn't even here at launch, which even the grand event, it wasn't even in Modern Warfare 3 until later on. But things that needed to be in the game, like the teeth, or heck, even leveling. I mean, that was all in the game at launch, but the teeth should have been like the special thing for completing the levels multiple times. Kind of like how when you beat all of the Treyarch Zombies Easter eggs in Black Ops 3, you got the RK5 to start with. Well, this mode, you always start with the freaking pistol and you can never trade it out you are stuck with that starting pistol for the whole game the whole one you can't switch it you can't change it you can't get a new gun you can't do any of those things to get a different weapon it made no sense in my opinion the game just didn't seem right it felt like a lot of it was lazily rushed together and called a day and they didn't want to change anything now I did like the looting aspect where you can search boxes and little piles to find scopes, armor piercing rounds, so flams, and I believe you could find money and I believe you could find actually um like I think it's like ammo or some weird thing and scopes and stuff. But those were all interesting ideas because Treyarch zombies didn't have those. That is something that needed to be in the game at launch, and I think that's something that wasn't. In all, Call of Duty Ghosts Extinction, seven years later, does not hold up. It's not a fun experience to play. It's not a very cool experience to play. It seems lazily put together and rushed. I don't want to go in depth on this mode because I didn't have a DLC, so I never got to see how good this mode turned out to be. I was stuck with the first one, and I'm not gonna go buy the season pass even if it goes on sale for 15 bucks. I mean, yeah, I get DLC weapons to use in multiplayer, but if I'm not gonna play the game, I have no reason to buy it. If the game was still, if the game was out for maybe a year and it was 2014, heck, I might buy it. 2015, I might buy it because there's still gonna be some people maybe playing. But it's too late now. I'm not interested. Infinity Ward has had two games since then: Modern Warfare and Infinite Warfare that have been 10 times more fun and 10 times more easily accessible. Besides Modern Warfare, that's another deal. All in all, Call of Duty Ghosts, seven years later, is not a bad game. But if it was 10 bucks, five, 10 bucks, sure, buy it, play the campaign, maybe play a little bit of multiplayer. Maybe you'll get some enjoyment. But if you're paying 60 bucks for it, maybe even, if you're paying above $15, it's not worth it, man. All in all, it ain't worth it. But with that out of the way, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. I know it's a long one. Shorter videos will be coming out. I just wanted to get something meaningful that I've meaning to talk about since it's the start of a decade with the new console generation coming out. Because, you know, this game launched when PS4 came out, and it's still available to play when the PS4 ends. We started this console generation with Infinity Ward, and we're ending it with Infinity Ward's Call of Duty. What I mean by that is, like, it's the last game that's not going to appear on two consoles. Because I know they're going to be launching Call of Duty Black Ops 5 on the PS4 and PS5 when it comes out. You know that that's what they're going to be doing. With that out of the way, hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys did, please do drop it a like. It would mean a lot if you guys did. With that out of the way, I will see you guys in the next one.